All right, welcome back to a brand new video. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some more slash commands. I'm gonna show you how we can create a slash command that allows user to select from a drop down menu. And then we're gonna make it so that when they select a certain option, it's going to apply a role to them. So in the old way, you would handle roles where people would just, you know, do some kind of text-based command. But now we're gonna actually have our own custom drop down menu. And I'm trying to see if I can find uh, the message component, which is what it's called. Uh, so on the documentation, this is what a drop down menu looks like, and you can obviously add your own options. So these are going to be roles, of course, but they could be whatever you want, of course. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into our code. So this is, I'm going to reuse the same project that I made for the discord zoom command. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. But the code is going to be on GitHub. I'll probably change the repository later, but uh, yeah, right now we have a simple zoom command, but we're actually going to go ahead and just modify our code just a little bit and just add a simple command for the user to just simply be able to just, uh, uh, interact with a drop down menu. So how is this command going to work? Well, this is supposed to be a message component, right? And what we essentially want to do is we want to first set up a slash command so that the user can actually initiate uh, the uh, the drop down like right. So basically, when we do the slash command, we're going to have to reply with a message and that message is going to include a message component and what happens here is when the user responds to the message component by either if it's a button for example if they click on the button it's going to send us an interaction create event with the button that we clicked on and if it's a drop down menu it will also send us another interaction create event with the uh, items that were selected in the drop down menu okay so what we're going to do is inside the interaction type which is going to be application command. We're going to go ahead and write over, let's see right over here. We'll write an else if, and we'll check to see if the command name is equal to roles. And this just means that the user is going to use the roles slash command. So for example, they will do something like slash roles. Okay, right now we don't have that command registered. So we will actually need to register it. So I'll go ahead and uh, let's see, we just want to have the user just do slash roles and it's going to respond with the drop down menu. So it's nothing going to be complicated. So we'll, what I'll do is I'll do client dot uh, application dot commands dot create. And we're going to go ahead and just specify the name roles description. Uh, see a list of roles that you can apply on the server not the best uh not the best description but that's okay and i'm going to go ahead and get the guild id because we're just going to go ahead and create a, a guild level command instead of a global command okay so that should have created that slash command you can see it's registered immediately so what happens here is that uh, right now we are not going to get anything because we're not responding to this interaction let me also just go ahead and delete this because we're, we, we're not going to need that anymore. But okay, so now what we got to do is we got to respond to this interaction. Okay, so since we are already listening to the interaction create event, uh, it's obviously already handling the interaction, but we're not replying to it. So for example, if I show you in the console, let me go back to Discord. If I do slash roles, you're going to see that we get a bunch of stuff in the console and it says roles command, which is what I just logged right now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to respond to this interaction. We'll do reply and we're going to go, go ahead and actually pass in the drop down menu. Now, how do we do that? Well, it should be pretty straightforward. Okay. So, uh, for the drop down menu or the select menu, rather, uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to go ahead and pass in this components prop. Okay, and you'll see that I'm actually looking on the Discord uh, docs, not the Discord JS docs. Um, I mean, they're pretty much identical in terms of like, like the examples and stuff. So whatever, uh, whatever you can see on the Discord docs, it's kind of predictable that the Discord JS docs would also follow along with their structure too. Though there might be some differences, but I, I suggest you consult Discord JS docs instead if you find it a little bit confusing with Discord.com docs. But it should be pretty straightforward. So uh, the first thing that we'll need is we'll need an action row because in order to have a select menu, you must have it inside 
an action row. Same thing with buttons. Okay, so the type of that is going to be an action row. So you're, you're seeing over here on the Discord docs, it's passing in one, but the Discord just library actually um, maps the action row type to the action number one. So underneath the hood, it will send the request to the Discord API with the uh, mapped values. So don't worry so much about that. So we're going to have to pass another array of components. And this time, we're just going to pass in an array. Oh, uh, we're not just not an array, but like uh, inside the array, we'll pass in um, an object. And inside the object, we're going to pass in similar structure like this. So for example, the type is going to be a select menu. OK, and then we're going to set a custom ID. So I'll just set this to rules. And then we're going to set the options. And for options, we're going to need, uh, let's see, the label. So the role, the, the role, I guess that's the, uh, how, how the, how the uh, role name will appear. So let's call this orange. And then the value of this will be, uh, let's see. But the value should probably be the, the role ID. Okay, for now, I'm just going to do one, two, three, because I don't have any roles just yet. Uh, let's see, we'll do a description orange roll and we can also set an emoji too i think you need you need you need the id of the emoji on the server i think you can also use unicode emojis as well uh let me actually check emoji uh let's see there i think you definitely can use um unicode for the emoji but i'm not too sure though we'll worry about that later okay so let's go ahead and just set two options let's do orange purple Let's change this to one, two, four. Let's do one more. So three with three options total. Oops. And then we'll do uh, blue. Let's change the value. We'll create the rules later. Okay. Um, so then there's also a placeholder, which is just, I guess, the uh, it's kind of like similar to an HTML select menu. Uh, select a role. So this tells the user to select a role. Uh, and then we'll also select a min number of values. So min values will be one max values uh we'll let the user select uh all the roles if they want to okay so this is what we're going to reply with and that should be pretty much it let's go ahead and try this out and make sure that everything works not zoom roll, rules command okay so we are getting an error and it's saying that we cannot send an empty message so let's go ahead and send uh some content so yeah please select rule if you want to use an embed you can also do that as well but we'll just leave it as a content a string so let's do slash rules now okay so you can see that we now get the select menu and now uh i'm gonna go over here okay so the moment i select something and if i exit you're gonna see that it's going to send that event over here to our console it's, it's going to send it to the bot and the bot's going to handle it so you can see right over here select menu interaction Okay, the type was a message component. So we'll handle that as well. Because remember, there's different types. There's there's an application command and message component. Those are the two that we'll, we'll be working with right now. So we'll have to write another else if. Okay, so uh, right now you'll see that if we look closely in the logs, uh, we can get the values that the user selected right over here, which is this array. But these could obviously just be array an array of uh, actual rule IDs. So let's go ahead and just create some, you know, rules real quick. Let's go ahead and create an orange rule. We'll select an orange. Okay, let me just copy the ID real quick and paste it into my code. And I encourage this is what you would probably be doing as well. Or something similar. Purple. Let's do purple. Copy the ID. Okay. Uh, there we go. That's the value. And then let's go ahead and do one more. It's blue. Okay. There we go. So we got all three values and the user will be able to select one of the three. Okay. So let's go ahead and handle this message component interaction. And the way we do that is, well, right now we're this, this logic is only for handling slash commands right? We need to actually handle the message components as well. So instead of checking if it's an application command, we're then going to write another else if and check to see if interaction.type is equal to message component. And if it is, uh, we're, I'm just going to write a simple log just to show you what happens. Okay, so 
pay attention to the logs. Okay, so right now the bot is logged in. I'm going to go ahead and do slash roles. Okay, the basic stuff is being logged. This is all from above. Don't worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and select orange. Click outside. You're going to see that it's going to go ahead and say on the bottom message component. So we need to go ahead and handle it now. So what do we have to do? Well, the first thing that we'll do is we'll cast this... Uh, We'll cast this interaction object. I'm going to remove this console log up there because it's kind of like clogging a lot of stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first cast this interaction object because I'm using TypeScript. If you're doing this in JavaScript, you don't have to worry about the casting. But I'm going to cast this to a message component. Uh, let me just go ahead and do uh, message component. And I want to cast this as a message component interaction i think that's the instance let me double check it should say right here select menu interaction uh i think in general it is a message component interaction um but then we can check to see what kind of uh we can check to see what kind is it a select menu but i think that should be fine but we essentially just want the values we want the values uh we want this values array so I'm trying to see what's the best way we can cast this without losing any data because we have to be very careful because this is a select menu interaction, but it could also be a button interaction as well. So we have to be very careful, right? So that's why I'm trying to see if there's any way we can check the type. Like, is there any way that it tells you if it's a select menu or not? That's the thing. Uh, I mean, I guess what we could do is check to see if interaction uh, instance of and let's check to see if it's a select menu interaction let's do a console log select menu and like i said if you were not using typescript you wouldn't have to worry about this but we do have to be careful and it is good to check for this so let's just try this again let me select the role and it should say select menu perfect okay so to be safe, we're going to check to see if interaction is an instance of select menu interaction because this could also be a button interaction. So we want to make sure we are not applying the logic for just all the buttons and the select menu interaction. We want to apply for only select menu interaction. Hopefully that makes sense. So if it's a select menu, then we can go ahead and cast interaction. Or we don't have to cast it because TypeScript will actually know. Okay, so we can actually reference this dot values property. If I try to reference it outside, TypeScript doesn't know if this is a select menu interaction. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just destructure that from interaction dot values. And I have this array. And what I can do now is I can just get the, uh, I can go ahead and take all of the uh, IDs from this array and I can just apply those IDs to the user for roles. So how do we do that now? Well, interaction has the member property and we can actually reference dot roles and we should be able to just uh, add an array of roles like this. And no throw an error if, uh, if anything bad happens. So let me go ahead and just destructure member just to make this a little bit cleaner. All right, and I think this is asynchronous. Let me go ahead and wrap this in a try catch in case anything happens. Okay, so this should be a, uh, I'm not sure what the return value of this is. It's a, it returns a guild numbers. Okay. Add it rules. And I wonder, I think there should be a way where we can send a message back. Oh yeah, we can definitely reply. We'll just say, uh, let's see. Content successfully applied rules. Okay, and if there's any error, we'll just... Go ahead and say fail to apply rules. All right, so let's try this out now and let's see what happens. Orange, purple, blue, and pay attention to my account. Fail to apply rules. I think it's because our bot is missing permission. Okay, that's fine. We got to see that part working. Let's go ahead and give our bot permission now. I'll just give my bot uh, the manage role permission. All right, so let's go ahead and give the bot the bot role and let's try again. 
orange, purple, blue. Successfully applied rolls. You can see I now have all three rolls. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you can uh, you know create a simple you know select menu with a uh, with uh, rolls as the values. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, the code is going to be in the description. I'm just going to go ahead and push this to GitHub. It's going to be the same GitHub repository with the zoom command. Hopefully you all don't mind. In a future episode, once we have enough slash commands, I'm going to show you how we can actually handle uh, the slash commands because right now this is actually very messy. You can see that we have um, we have like a long if else condition and it's just very messy. So I'll show you in a later episode how to handle that. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Also just want to mention that I have a brand new Discord server. Feel free to join it. Link is down below. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.